and as teaching writing, I've always kind of tried to uh, be concerned about the way that teachers or students approach writing. Um, so I call this report, uh, it's, it's my own acronym, it is ELT, so I thought I would uh, give it an acronym. Um, so I'll just go through with it to you and um, try to address a few things uh, relating to writing. Um, well, my notes are all over the place, so just one second while I try and tidy myself here a bit. Sorry. Okay, um, so the way I see it when we are, um, as writers, uh, students face four major problems. Um, and uh, part of these problems, um, they're not necessarily exclusive to um, language learners. Ex every, we come across them all the time, uh, increasingly. Uh, I know myself because I'm, I'm a student and going through my own learning and stuff like that. Uh, being getting feedback from from teachers has always been an interesting experience. But um, there are four four big problems I see. Um, three of them are linked uh, together <laughs> to kind of create a big monster problem, I suppose. And then there's one kind of uh, I suppose a new a new issue that's kind of come up. Uh, and I should uh, be uh, careful. <coughs> because uh, I don't really like using the word problem with writing. Uh, I think it's very pessimistic, and I think we need to be a lot more optimistic in the language that we use. Um, and I'll get into that in a little bit as I go through my problems. <laughs> um, so writing isn't exclusively about essays and stuff like that. Different tasks require different kind of skills, uh, different ways of interpreting the, the idea. Uh, something as simple as a text message uh, you know, has uh, different requirements. Uh, so for a text message, it's a specific, specific recipient, uh, a specific language, specific tone. If anyone has ever read my text messages, uh, they would also know sometimes I need proofreading. Um, and, and there's also a... Pardon? It's predictive texting. It gets you know, I'm a nightmare. I'm terrible. I'm with like fat thumbs and all sorts of problems like that. Uh, and also there's the time element as well. Uh, for example, this text message here may or may not require an urgent reply. Um, likewise, uh, there's a, an IELTS question. Can't really see it, but whatever. Anyway, uh, it has a particular tone. It has a particular structure. Um, language is very important. But also, there's an unknown recipient, and the time is very important. In this case here, it's, it's 40 minutes. And obviously, we pull in other factors. Um, Another problem is uh, that I see is the, what I call the red pen of death. And I threaten my students with it all the time when they give me homework, I'm going to get the red pen and I'm going to destroy your page. And they go, oh no, but I don't because I, don't, I feel it's counterproductive. Um, but just by calling them corrections, we're automatically implying that there's fault. Um, and I mean, if anyone's ever written anything themselves, I mean, nobody writes anything perfect. I don't, I don't think there's anything such a thing as a perfect piece of writing. Um, but by implying this error, you know, if, we, if we're ex expecting them to always make mistakes, how can they kind of develop the idea that, you know, that, that they can do it right? You know, so they're relying on us to, to fix what they've done. And so, uh, so they re rely on us to, to learn for them and, and to always be the right answer. But we always make, we make mistakes as well in our own writing. Um, okay. Um, the next thing as well is uh, something called foreign language anxiety, uh, which, is, which is a big thing, um, which is, uh, you were discussing anxiety, exact same problems connected with, uh, with uh, communicating in a second language, well, maybe not to such an ex extreme extent, extent, but definitely it's, a, it's something you come across a lot, and, and we definitely notice it uh, with writing as we ask students to, 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 um, to write something. Uh, you know, we see anxiety, people get nervous, they get shifty, they don't want to do it, they think it's wrong. All these things are building up inside of them. Um, and it, anxiety, it kind of creates this apprehension um, and, and it kind of, uh, it unsettles us. Okay? And we expect like this kind of world view of our, our own kind of what should be perfect. But it, it's writing and, and, you know, if anyone's ever written anything, uh, for college or, or for, for money, uh, you know, how many times, <laughs> that's a better one, how many times do you rewrite something, how many times do you look at it and go, ugh, all right, um, uh, okay, and, and 
you know, error correction, this ties in with error correction, this, this increases this anxiety as they submit something and how many times do you get students to write something, they submit it and they're like, they're like automatically, what did I do wrong? I was like, whoa, well, just chill out a second, all right? Um, let's have a look. Um, and the second one is uh, the increasing reliance of technology and AI. Now, you mentioned phones in the classroom. I noticed a couple of people on the program going to talk about tech. Uh, I'm talking about things like Google Translate, which I'd burn. <laughs> Just in the classroom because I need it when I go on holidays. Uh, but also, uh, um, Grammarly. I do writing assignments. Students have to write tests and they put up in the corner. Can I use Grammarly? I'm going to get one of those t-shirts that say no Grammarly and just <laughs> save myself. Uh, there are other things, even something as simple as spell check on MS Word. You know, people, well, MS Word didn't show the red line under it. Because like, yeah, it's spelled correctly. It's, a, it's what we call a typo. All right. So, and, and I think what this is doing to us is students are losing, um, they're losing trust in themselves and they're relying on the technology to provide the right answer. And when they're actually called to do a, a task, um, you know, in an exam where they have to write a, an essay or something like that, they're not used to actually having the, the, the device with them. So, so it's, it's problematic in that. And also even if they're writing, my guys have to write a have to write research essays and stuff like that, and they, even then they rely on um, they rely on tools to to to, um, to what they feel is give them the right answer, I suppose. But but they're not really using them the right way, or they're over relying on them, I suppose. Um, and but the most important thing is they're not really learning how to write without the tools. Um, and uh, okay, so um, as teachers, we need to kind of <laughs> equip students of all backgrounds. Um, to, um, you can read it there while I find my way around this thing. <laughs> we need to equip uh, students of all backgrounds and abilities uh, with the tools to become, com to, be to become confident and competent writers of English. And confident, I think, is, is important in that you give them a task to write and they can approach it, not worrying about tripping up and stuff like that. Competent means that they can do it successfully, I suppose. Um, and there are different standards. Is it a text message? Is it a IELTS essay? Is it a 1500 word research essay? Or whatever, okay? Um, uh, the other thing is, you know, teachers, students as well, uh, rely on, on feedback. Uh, there are numerous benefits to feedback, but it's limited, um, purely because uh, our time is limited in the classroom. And uh, also, um, you know, a uh, couple of other problems, uh, it's elastic in that, it, it do, it's stretchable, sometimes something is fit, sometimes it doesn't fit, sometimes we give too much, sometimes we don't give enough. Uh, another issue is it's non-transferable, so speed, feedback doesn't really work among, like if you all did a writing task for me, I couldn't give you group feedback, probably wouldn't be suitable, it would be best to go around to each individual person and talk to them. And of course, what that means is we run out of time because it takes five minutes to deal with yourself and 25 minutes to deal with yourself. Uh, and, and another person doesn't even listen. <laughs> Not digging into any, um, you know, memories there. But, but yeah, there's the other thing as well, and I, I, that kind of touches onto something there um, in terms of students' attitudes toward feedback. And I know when I, I was doing a master's dissertation, and I thought I wrote the most beautiful rolling prose describing something ever. And the supervisor sent it in for a feedback and the supervisor highlighted the whole paragraph and he said, delete this, it's nonsense. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it, it took me about three days to delete it. I was looking at it, like, no, I refuse to delete it, it's my, but, but, but in, the, in the long run, it's, I, I get, yeah, he's, he's probably right. This is the professional. I'll take his word for it and maybe try to understand it later on. Um, so it is, but, but, but this is well, and I've come across this with language students as well. They just kind of say, well, I, you know, you have to feedback and maybe they don't listen or something like that. So I've come up with this thing called self-feedback. And this raised a few eyebrows when I mentioned it with, uh, to my uh, colleagues the other day. It's, uh, it's, I think I made it up, um, but I think it's supposed to describe what I'm talking about here. Uh, and, and what I'm, I'm trying to do is, uh, uh, I'm trying to talk about a, a means of uh, encouraging autonomy uh, in the classroom for learners, okay? 
it, it's a method uh, or a strategy for learners. Uh, it's based on my own experiences as a writer, um, be it academically or creative writing or um, uh, for money. I uh, didn't get paid a lot. Uh, <laughs> um, and the odd tweet, uh, which I'm known to do. Um, okay. Um, but it's about equipping uh, learners uh, to be autonomous um, and, and to have a little bit of faith in themselves and a little bit of trust in themselves. And uh, these little steps are just designed, something that I've, I've been teaching for a long time, I feel. Um, and over the past 12 months, I've tried to be put it into a more instructable kind of way, rather than just kind of throwing suggestions at them. And this is what I came up with. And the Ackerman, or, do you want to guess what they are? Or, pardon? Reflection. Read it. Read it. Read it. Read it. Uh, and actually, E. Edis. No, I'm not even having picked up a pen yet. <laughs> Evaluate. P. Probe. Get to. O is organized, which is, you could probably say is, 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 is to plan it. Uh, redraft. And. Um, um, test. test. All right, test. All right, so what I should say is uh, primarily I work with this when people have already submitted something. They've worked on a first draft, all right? Um, but it is possible that you could actually, uh, you could look at it from, from, the very, from, the, from the start as well. Most of the time this works is if they have a chance to, to, uh, to work at it from a, from a, from a second draft, uh, definitely works then. But it, but the steps are still still uh, still the same thing. So just going through them bit by bit. <laughs> Read and evaluate. Uh, very simple thing. What's the task or the question? You'd be surprised how many people don't actually read and understand the question, or what's the task. And this doesn't this this like it. You know, when you read something, it also means to think about it. What are the possibilities, uh, and, and what what can I do about it? Um, then read. What have you written? Um, it's very straightforward when people write something. Um, I, I'm sure we've all experienced situations where people write something and then they give it to you. And it's very clean. Suspiciously clean. Where did you, do you have previous workings somewhere? Am I, or are you a genius that doesn't make mistakes when you write? I haven't met one yet. Okay? Um, and this is a question of reading back over it and, 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 and seeing what you've written. And this falls in to... Do you understand it? Not just a question, but what you've written, because we come across people, especially in the EAP end of things, when people might be writing about something to do with biological sciences or something like that. And they've written something, and they don't understand it. If you don't understand it, how can anyone else really understand it? Um, so, so this is just kind of the first step. Um, the next one is to evaluate, uh, and I'm a big on this uh, about. Getting people to look at what have you done well. So many people, as I said, they look and say, "What did you do wrong? What have I done wrong?" It's like, no, hang on a minute. You've written 500 words. Um, uh, what, let's look at the good things. What have you done well? Is the structure well? Your spellings. Start at the top and and, and try to focus on the positives here, because uh, invariably they do do things well. Um, but because we have the red pen, I use purple to try to be, you know. But it's still the same. They still see. You know, a, a tattoos destroys. <laughs> Apologies, anyone tattoos, but you know what I mean. It's a graffiti. Uh, you know, something or another that was it's, it's illegible half the time with the amount of work somewhere, right? And then of course, what can be improved? All right, okay. Um, all right. Um, next thing. Moving on. Oops. Uh, it's very encouraging writers to understand what is what is actually wrong, okay, or what is right. What can be done to improve it? All right. Um, probe is uh, going through it, looking at it, asking questions about what do you want to say? Okay, am I using the correct grammar? Am I using the correct vocabulary? Um, uh, and then questioning your decisions. Why did I use this tense? Why did I use this word? Um, is there another way that I could phrase this? Okay, am I happy with everything I've done? And is this the correct way to do this? Um, this is where editing could come in. All right, about um, you know, correcting stuff, um, self-correcting, um, but as we've already seen, we've read through what we understand, 
um, uh, how can we how can we change these things? All right. Organizing. This is if it's a larger text, smaller text, maybe a little bit easier or quicker to do. But we're definitely with larger pieces of work. Uh, what needs to be done? Uh, prioritize by size and significance. What's the most important thing? Is it big? Is it small? And um, then allocate your time. How much time do you need to do something? And then finally, you know, set a schedule. When are you going to do it? Um, finally, things, some advice that I always give. You need to know your strengths and your weaknesses. Work with the knowledge you know. And also, uh, communication, your primary objective is always to be understood. Regardless of what you write or what you write about. If you can't be understood, you're, you're failing. Well, sorry, I shouldn't use that word. I'm trying to be positive here. <laughs> but you're not getting the job done, so to be. Okay? And then uh, finally, rewrite and test. This is the process of rewriting and redrafting, fixing stuff. This is the only stage, arguably, when you could pick up a pen or go back to your career. Arguably. Now, maybe you might disagree. How do you, how do you probe through it and stuff like that? You might need a pen. But um, the process of rewriting, looking at what you know and what you must do, playing with what you've written, and then finally having a little bit of trust with yourself. All right? And the last, finish up. And the test is basically about submitting it or giving it in. I try not to subscribe to this mantra a little bit too much. Fail again, fail better. You're going to make mistakes. It's not going to be perfect. Hopefully it's not your, you know, your IELTS exam and you need a 7 and you get a 6.5 because of small grammar mistakes. <laughs> but, you know, you're going to, you're going to, we have to stop encouraging students to believe that writing has to be perfect every time. It's going to improve with time. Um... And I'm sure we've all experienced that ourselves. Uh, so the purpose of report is to empower, encourage writers to be confident, to equip writers beyond the language learning classroom. And this, I think, is, is important because I work in EAP. A lot of the guys, they, they come to us, they do their course, and then they move on. Uh, and if they haven't really learned anything, then they, they, it's, it's obviously problematic. Uh, to prepare writers to be more like writers, you don't just write something and let it, well you do, it's called Twitter. Right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, uh, and of course, give writers the support to notice their own progress, as none of this writing business is actually easy.